welcome to the St. Joe Lincoln Senior Center in St. Joe, Michigan. We're gonna do chair yoga today. I brought several things. We call them props or pieces of equipment that assist us in uh, creating a safety or just a little bit of help to make sure we're comfortable. Uh, being on this side of the camera, I have no idea what type of medical conditions people have. And so I wanna just make sure that you can customize this chair yoga workout for your needs. Please remember you do not need any of these fancy things. Sometimes I improvise, not only drinking from my water bottle, but I can use that to put a little bit of support on if I'm leaning over sideways. Maybe it's something else you have at your home that you can use. So if you have a fancy yoga block, mine are made of cork, so they're very sturdy and solid. Some of them are tipsy because they're made of sponge. So it's up to you, but the reason why we use some of these tools could be a very large book or something else. Just make sure it's really sturdy and it's not gonna tip out from underneath you. So they're uh, very helpful in safety. One of my favorite tools is this ball. And as you notice, it's not blown up. It's nice and squishy, so when it sits, it flattens out more uh, like an egg, an oval. So we're gonna use this, and you can find whatever you need to for a back bend stretch that's completely supported. I'm just putting the ball right between my shoulder blades, closer to the bottom of my shoulder blades, and I'm able to press it against my chair. So you need a chair that has a back that's just high enough that you can sit with that ball behind you and it allows you to move and wiggle a little bit. There's some cushion, I can even bounce. And this is a wonderful way to help get your posture stronger, taller, and I'm all about the posture. And you can really lift your chest up and relax your head back. So it's okay. If you don't have this, you can try to find something else that might be similar, even if it's a big fat cushion, which came from my chair at home, and support your upper back. That helps a smaller type of pillow. We can also use the pillow to lay it on our belly, really push it there. So for bending forward, some of us, based on our spines and osteoporosis, might need more support. You can use one fat one, a couple of bed pillows. You have to find, I have a very long body, so I need just something to help support my spine at the same time. My neck will get to relax with the assistance of gravity rather than pushing forward. For some of us with osteoporosis, this helps support us as we lengthen our spine, maybe reaching our arms forward and up. So these are handy tools that I would like you to stop, pause the video, See what you have around your house. Maybe it's a big, tall can of beans. Um, it's another chair. We have two more items that before you stop and pause, grab an old belt, a scarf. Uh, it's getting hopefully towards the end of our snow season in Michigan. So if it's really slippery, silky scarf, you wanna be careful, but it has to be long enough. Mine's a fancy strap. It will help me in case I need to lift my leg up and bending over is a harder thing or not safe for you to do. So we also have a strap. Try to get a strap that's similar in length to the one that I'm demonstrating. You can also use a towel, which we will be using for a neck stretch today. Mine's what they used to call a bath towel. Pretty small, not too big. If you get a bath towel, just make sure it's not too bulky. If you don't have a towel, you can also use that scarf for this. So we're gonna take it and we're gonna use it. Make sure you're comfortable. This fits just right. Or I can hold on to the ends of my towel and my arms are not too high. I can bring them down. I can move my elbows back and forth. And we're gonna do some things with neck stretches with our towel or scarves today. So these are all the toys that you could possibly want to use for our chair yoga class. So my name is Jean Green, and I'm so excited that I get to teach all of you from the comfort of your home, and comfort is what we want. 
If it's okay for you to take your shoes off and you have a non-slippery surface, I put down two yoga mats and I have a non-slip safe surface for me, then um, I love how we can ground our feet and get the sensation we need from the bottoms of our feet to tell us all about balance and strength. So go ahead and pause this video if you need to, grab what you need, and come on back down and start taking some deep breaths in and then we'll all start together. <sighs> Inhale deep. And exhale out. So the posture I'd like you to sit in while we take deep breaths is to scooch all the way back into the chair. So you almost feel your tailbone right there at the crevice where the seat and the back of your chair meet. And there's a small little lumbar curve and your chest is lifted. If you have the strength, slide about halfway forward in your chair and you can try to take some breaths using full unsupported posture. So let's bring our head into the right position, correctly aligned with the rest of our spine. So we want our chin to be pulled back, straight back, so it feels as if the ears are in a plumb line down over the shoulders rather than in front of the shoulders. We try to pull the chin and the face straight back. We're gonna let those arms dangle and then just softly let them land. We want the shoulders to feel as if they're over the hips. So if you can lengthen your posture from a tipping forward to a tipping. So we feel like we've started the foundation on our seat, the bones that we're sitting on, the back of the thighs, the feet, all the way up through the sides of our body, the torso, to the shoulders, and then to the ears. So we also, and I have one side of my body that's a little bit stronger than the other. So my left shoulder does hike up slightly more than my right shoulder. So I highly recommend you check out what your posture looks like in a mirror and be honest with yourself. So relax those shoulders down. First thing we're gonna do is just start breathing through the nose and rolling those shoulders. We don't have to worry about rolling them too far forward. Lift them up towards the ears, but let's draw the shoulders towards each other behind us, towards our spine, pulling them down as much as we were up and back. It's pretty easy to roll them forward. So we're gonna just close our eyes Take three more shoulder rolls up towards the ears, shoulder blades towards the spine, and then setting the bottom tips of our shoulder blades into our imaginary pockets in the back of us. So when we're done with a few of those, I want you to let your arms dangle if that's okay. Palms facing the camera, the TV. And I want you to bring those shoulders up just enough that you can really focus on how good it feels to let them lower down, soft and slow, as far as they'll go with the help of gravity. So when we inhale, let them come up just gentle and natural. Exhale out the nose. If you need to hear your breath, it's a big, loud ha. Your choice, in and out through the nose. Shoulders lift, chest lifts, exhale, let your upper body start to sink down towards the ground. We'll keep doing that with the breath. Just enough tension in the shoulders, the upper body, so that we can really feel the difference when we lower down the shoulders. Again, let the fingers relax, palms forward, or if that's uncomfortable, thumbs forward. And keep working on your shoulders up, and ah, out. So this is where we keep the most tension. We're going to imagine today that we are coming from a seed that's in the ground and we're gonna burst through the soil where it feels safe and protected, but we're gonna grow and we wanna blossom and we wanna feel like a flower, really spacing the sun and just soaking up the warmth and the energy. So let's first imagine that we really are feeling gravity in the ground. So we're gonna place those feet comfortable hip distance apart. Again, we're always working on our posture and we're gonna wiggle those toes, we're gonna to spread them. And this is why I like to do yoga barefoot when it's safe to do it barefoot. 
And I want you to first just point those toes. When I do that, I can feel the calf muscles strengthen and then set the heels down and lift the tops of the feet and all 10 toes towards my shins. So we're working on the ankles right now and spreading and lengthening the toes. Again, you might be needing some support behind you while we work on our feet. So I want you to ground those feet. I want you to be very aware of your feet. One of the reasons we fall at any age is because lack of flexibility and mobility in our feet and ankles. And then as we age, other complications can creep in. Plantar fasciitis, which is inflammation in the arch of our foot. So what I want you to do now is think of all four points of your feet. The ball of the big toe, the ball of the little pinky toe, and the right and left sides of your heels. And think of two feet, two cars, and all four wheels into the ground. So we have eight wheels on the floor, and I want you to press all four wheels on each foot firmly into the ground. And while you're leaving the ball of your big toe and little toe in the ground, lift your toes up and spread them. This is very good for the arch of our foot. And then just relax. If you notice, the whole body is connected. When I lift my toes up and I press the balls of all four wheels into the ground, my thigh muscles get firm. My shins and my calves are also responding. So the feet are what we call really grounding. We're digging our roots into Mother Earth. So it feels like being a seed in the ground would be a really safe thing to be but we have predators that come along like bugs that eat seeds and will decay if we stay there long enough. Or what about the squirrels that are digging up all those seeds and eating? So we want today to just grow. No matter how much energy, no matter how risky it is, we're gonna grow in our mind, our feelings, our heart, our emotions. Hopefully this will feel really good. And then we're also gonna grow in how our body feels, stretching and spreading. So I want you to grow where the energy is, up, upward. That's why we want a tall posture through the crown of our head. At the same time, we're grounding and spreading the fingers, rooting towards the earth. So our shoulders come down. So we're energetically upward, downward, and even out. Imagine the leaves coming from the stem, reaching outward, forward and back, all the way around the stem. So we'll go ahead and start with inhaling first, lifting the chest. You don't have to lift the chin slightly. Just lift the chest. Maybe lift the gaze upward without even having to tip the head back. Breathing in when the arms come up, breathing out as they come down. Find your speed to lift the arms on the inhale, Lower the arms on the exhale. Remember, we're reaching up towards energy, maybe the sunshine, and then we're reaching the fingers down towards the soil and gravity. Now we're gonna add the twist to this. So to do that, we're gonna be supported by our chair. So let's move the ball to our thighs after we've turned. You're turning to your left, and I'm your mirror image. So I'm gonna place the ball or the pillow, maybe even if it is a block. I'll place the block between my thighs. This helps keep our hips square. Use the ball. Let's try to place it between the thighs so we don't put pressure on the inside of the kneecaps. Reach those arms up tall. Look forward. Notice there's a small curve in my low back, the lumbar curve, and then there's also the same curve in the back of my neck. We're going to inhale as we lower down and face away from this TV screen or your camera screen, you're gonna to look towards the back and we're gently rotating. So I'm going to show that again. Inhale, rotate towards the back of your chair and then hang on to the back of your chair without your shoulders lifting. And because I want my voice to face the camera, I will show you the same movement with the chair this way. So we're gently hugging the ball we're lifting the body up, keeping both sides of our torso long, shoulders come down, and now we're rotating. Keep a gentle pressure between your thighs. 
Sitting tall, feel the twist starting at your waist, and then maybe moves to the ribs, and then the breastbone maybe moves a little further back, and then if it's safe, carefully, move your eyes first to look in the direction you're going, and then the neck, and then if you can, close your eyelids so you can feel how that rotation feels. And the sit bones of your feet, on the floor, all four wheels of each foot, and both of your sit bones on the chair. We'll stay one more breath. Remember, you can always pause this and stay for anywhere from 30 seconds to two or three minutes in each pose. Inhale slowly, very slowly, first the neck, then the chest, then the waist. Let's take the second side. So I will again turn around so that you can still see me in the camera. So we're on the second side. Now it's your right side. Inhale, reach, start to lower the arms down as you rotate waist, ribs, breastbone towards the back of the chair, eyeballs and gaze first, then the chin and head follows. Exhale, lower those shoulders, take the tension out of your neck. Keep breathing deep, and we're gonna take the next three breaths in quiet silence. chest up, slowly turn your gaze, chest, waist. So I'll come back to my chair. So the twisting is very important. That helps us, the more mobile we are right here in the torso, to not lose our balance. So let's just do some gentle twisting with what I call arms. We're just going to keep exhaling as you punch your knuckles forward. So now we're doing some active movement. For those of you who feel like standing, imagine there's a hand coming from above you and it's just drawing you up from the top of your head to the sky as you stand. And if you can keep your balance by keeping your hips quiet, facing forward, and we're rotating. Make sure you're breathing out any tension anything that might not feel comfortable. All right, we're gonna do four more, three more, and go ahead and bring those hands back down. Make sure you know where that chair is and have a seat. Ah, let it all out. So we're gonna move this now to the back of our chair. We're gonna focus on the back side of our body. So we're going to lengthen up the arms wherever they feel comfortable. This adds weight. So this is an option, not a necessity. Hands can be on your chest or thighs. If they're forward, this is more weight on your upper back and it might not be safe for you. If your hands are lifted, palms up or thumbs up. So I'm going to try the version where my hands are just resting on my chest and I'm carefully using the back of my neck. I can feel my feet growing roots into the ground, and I can feel my chest, just like a flower, lifting my stalk up, 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 out of the seed, out of the ground, towards the sun above me. So I want to gaze upward gently without putting any pressure on the back of my neck, and you're in a gentle back bend. I will also show you what this looks like from the other side. upward, imagining there's warm rays of sunshine. See if you can give me a little Mona Lisa smile. It doesn't have to be a big one, but even if you just smile, I think it's going to go all the way down to your toes, making you feel good. 
Make sure you open your eyelids if they're closed before we sit back tall again. Let's go ahead and take the ball out. This time, we're gonna do the forward fold for our spine. So I'm gonna start with my pillow. As my spine gets more flexible, especially if it's early in the morning, then I can decide if I no longer need such a big pillow and a smaller one or no pillow. So we're just gonna start to really peel ourselves over. My chest is reaching towards the front of the room and beyond my toes, and now I'm just gonna gyrate for one moment. I wanna really feel both sides of my upper back expanding outward. My neck is comfortably draping down. Please be careful to pull your chin in towards your throat notch. And let your arms just comfortably dangle. So we're opening up what we call the back side of our lungs. It helps you breathe, helps you feel like you can take a really deep breath in. From the side, it looks like this. When we come up, please remember to place your hands on your thighs and help your muscles come up. This is a stress-free class, so take the stress out of lifting hard and heavy up against gravity. If you choose to do this without a pillow, you can still use the pillow between your legs, and you can just peel yourself forward and over. And remember, I'm showing you from the side so that you can hear my voice and see my body better. If you need to turn your head sideways, but try to let your forehead come towards your chest. We'll be here for about 15 more seconds. So see if you can take one to two breaths in that time. And while you're breathing deep, how does your spine feel? Is your low back tight? Is your breath bigger and deeper? Alrighty, so we're gonna take one more stretch, our hips from sitting too much. And I am firmly a believer that whatever you practice frequently, whatever you spend a lot of time doing, is what you get very good at doing. So, some of us get very good at sitting. So, some of us don't have a choice, but if you have a choice, make sure you move. I love the quote about life is all about sitting down and standing up. So there's times where we do need to sit, and then there's times where we really need to move and sway in the wind, just like that uh, blossom, coming out of the earth, it's gonna sway in the wind, we're gonna move, we're gonna dance, we're gonna look around, we really wanna see all the other blossoms around us. So we wanna find out, do we get our energy from the people, the other blossoms around us, from the sun, from our food, soil, or do we get our energy from just staying curled up like a seed under the ground? So I'm gonna again turn towards your, this is your left, and now, I'm just gonna let this leg drop. For some of us, this might be a little tricky, so I'm using my towel to help me. And I'm sliding so that I'm really only sitting on the back of my left thigh, your left thigh, and your left buttocks cheek. And I can place my leg wherever I need to with the help of my hand. And I'm holding onto the back of my chair, and I'm putting no weight at all on my knee. Again, I want a plumb line from my ear, Pulling the chin back, comfortable space between the chin and the chest, down through the shoulder, the hip to the knee. And this will start stretching out the hip flexor. If you can, try to slice off your ear, reach your fingers up, imagine you're that stalk growing out of the sea. You're like a tulip in the spring Michigan time. And then once you've reached your stalk up, now you're gonna sway in the wind towards the back of your chair. And this will help open up the hip flexor. Now if your arm is draped forward, whatever you can do to pull the arm back, lift the chest, and then maybe it's appropriate to look up towards your thumb or your hand, or maybe you wanna gaze forward or let your head go, same drape as the arm. 
The arm in the air is optional. You can also now let the arm in the air just drape down, which is a beautiful side stretch for me. So we're trying to stretch the side of our body, chest, arm, and neck. Pick any of those to work on one at a time. Alrighty. Slowly, using the back of your chair, come on back up. We're going to leave that leg right where it is and finish twisting. Again, you're going to twist towards the left. And then we're going to slowly come on back. Let's do the second side. So the goal here is to get our hip nice and long. Some of you are very flexible. And again, now I'm sitting on just the right thigh and the right buttocks cheek. Some of you are very flexible and you can move this leg back a little bit more without pinching anything in the low back. Again, we want to sit nice and tall with the ear and the shoulder in alignment, holding the back of your chair, reach the chest up, arm up, and then tip over towards the back of your chair, support yourself, stay here while your left knee is still floating and not touching the ground. Make sure the back feels comfortable. This is our side supported stretch. We're going to stay looking again. Find out where your neck feels the best. I really like my arm coming down and my head tipping over a little bit. And then when I reach my arm up, it makes a stretch from my hip to my ribs, my armpit. So I like to move this arm. Instead of moving it up and down, you can take the knuckles forward and you can rotate forward and back or backwards and forward. So it's okay to move this upper body around any way you really feel is good for you. So I'm going to slide that arm down. Take a deep breath in when you're ready to sit up tall. Leave your hips still stretching the opposite of our hinge when we sit. Turn slowly and carefully. After one full breath, we'll come back and face the camera with wide legs. So I'm going to move this chair. And I'm still going to want to use my towel. So this is where we're just going to see what our legs do. We're going to open them up. I like to sit on the very edge of my chair. If you can, you can also sit where the corner of the chair comes out between the legs. Might be more comfortable this way for you. But we're just gonna press the toes, all 10 of them into the ground, carefully lengthening out the legs. I can even pull my kneecaps up towards my hips so it feels like I could bounce jelly beans off of my thighs since it's getting close to Easter. And then with support only, I want you to be able to use something while your legs are wide, to be able to come forward. Notice my spine is not rounded, it's nice and long. So this is a wide leg, leg stretch. Toes down, or heels can gently come up. I like my toes down, stretches the ankles. So we're gonna look with the back of our neck nice and long, no creases in all four sides of our neck long. Okay, to come up, make sure you're using support. You can also use that second chair in front of you instead of the blocks. So we're going to slowly come on up with the help of our arms. And you can stay in that stretch as long as you'd like. Let's try the same stretch with our knees bent. Again, I really like support as I go forward. So this will stretch less of our hamstrings or the back thigh muscles little bit more right there in the groin area and we're going to slowly stay here you can move with it i really like a gentle up and down flowing motion these blocks are just a little bit too slow feel, feel around with what you have books to make it the right height now we're in this position. You have a choice with your legs. You can either leave the legs longer or bend the knees. Put your right hand, if it's all the way down on the floor, it's probably a little too far. 
and then reach the thumb to the sky with your left arm and now twist backwards. So this is the opposite of the twist we just did facing the back of the chair. Use those back muscles to pull and open your chest. I also like to put my hand closer to my temple and really lift my elbow up and back. So we're going to stay here just a little bit longer. Knees bent. Again, we're gently tipping forward. So let's bring the arm down first. Stretch out the spine nice and long. Bring it back to neutral, both sides. Place your left hand down, palm faces forward, and then start to rotate backwards and looking chest upward. Again, if this is better for you, bend the elbow, put the knuckles near your temple, lift that elbow up and pull it back. Continue to take big, strong breaths. Reaching that arm up is a possibility. Just try not to hike up the shoulder. Let the shoulder come away from the ear. Slowly, let's rotate back to center. Stretch out your spine on all four sides, and then come on up. So I promised that we were gonna do some fun things. First thing we're gonna do is just wiggle out the stress that might be in our roots, and just use your toes and your feet. The towel is one of my favorites. So the first thing I like to do is just take that towel, and we're gonna put it right here, nice and long. The muscles right here, we want them to relax. So I'm just gonna pull my elbows back a little bit and down. And that kind of helps remind me not to hike my shoulders up. My chest is gently lifted. My chin feels level. And I'm just going to kind of gently lift up. This supports the back of my neck and keeps me from going too far. So from the side view, this is what it looks like. And my head is very supported on the back of this towel. Ah, and when I pull my chin down towards my throat notch, I can still feel the neck on the towel on three sides. So that is the first neck stretch. The second neck stretch is moving this towel up just enough that I feel like it's cradling my skull. And it's right there where the skull meets my spine. It's a little tiring on the arms, but it supports my head like a hammock. And I can also pull up, lengthening my neck, and letting my head relax. So these are neck stretches I'd love for you to do any time of the day using the support of a towel. Now leaving the towel right where it's at, take your hand, this will be your left hand, onto the right side of the towel. The hand that's not holding it is going to kind of lift up and over and gently the weight of your right arm is going to help you stretch. This is where you might need the support of the back of your chair so you can keep your chin comfortably where it's at. When you lift back up, make sure you can use your hands to help you. Again, second side. So I'm going to take this hand, cross it over. It's now in the left side towel. My right hand pulls it up towards the ear and over. And now we stretch and relax. So we will finish class right here with these neck stretches. Please feel free to gently keep wrapping that ear, stretching both sides of your neck, as well as the back and front with the use of the towel for added safety to your neck and spine. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please remember to be a flower that blossoms and reaches towards the sun. Namaste.